I recently built an app that is cross-platform across iOS, Android, and desktop web. And in this video, I want to talk about the tech stack setup between the two applications and how I configure everything to share all common components together, as well as sharing common logic like backend, as well as purchasing, authentication, all that. So let's get into it. All right, first, let me provide a little bit of context about what exactly I'm building. So the tool that I'm building is called Monty, and it is essentially a suite of productivity tools to make your work life easier. There is a web application here, as well as a Google Play application here. And then there's also the app store right here. So it is essentially one app that has a bunch of mini tools wrapped up and bundled into it. Right now we have an AI meeting note recorder where you can record audio using your phone and we transcribe the whole thing, summarize it, and then you can chat with your text transcription to get any insight that you want. And then we also have the ability for users to upload documents like a PDF, and then they can chat with it, get their summary, generate action items, all that. So those are the first two tools that we have come out with. And then we plan to add a couple more tools in the future. So that is a quick overview of the product itself that we built. Now let's get into the tech stack that we used to build it actually out. So for the mobile application, we ended up using Expo. So React Native Expo. The reason why we went forward with this decision is the fact that, well, in the past, I have built out mobile applications, both with Swift UI, the native Apple framework, as well as with Flutter too. But the thing is, that was so long ago. At this point, when I wanted to build another mobile application, it was essentially as good as starting from scratch. I had to kind of relearn everything because it's been so long since I've touched any mobile app development framework because I primarily build full stack web applications applications using Next.js. So the reason why I decided to go with Expo is two primary reasons. Number one is the fact that it is React based. And like I said previously, I am primarily a full stack web developer. I'm most comfortable with React within Next.js. So that is a huge factor for choosing Expo because then I can share a lot of common code between Expo as well as my Next.js application, which I use for my web app right here. Now with Expo, the second reason that I wanted to choose this is with code push as well. For those of you that aren't too familiar with this, normally when you push out a new update on your app, App, let's say you see like a typo or some type of bug on your phone or some type of bug on your app. Normally to fix that bug, you have to then create a brand new build and then submit that build into the Apple App Store and Google Play Store for review. And sometimes it can take up to 24 hours for them to review it and approve it. But with code push within Expo, you can essentially send an over there update to your application to fix any critical bugs without having to go through the Apple App Store and Google Play Store review process. Now, I know that Google and Apple kind of frown on this. They don't love that you kind of bypassing their systems. And it's possible to do this. I personally had to do it yet, but I did want to have this as like an emergency fallback option in case something bad ended up happening. But that's probably not the biggest reason. The bigger reason why I chose Expo was definitely because of the, the React based coding that I can share common code and common logic with in my Next.js application. So for my web application, I'm using Next.js to build everything and it's hosted on Vercel. Vercel is good. It's not the greatest out there. It can get pretty expensive later on. I haven't crossed that threshold quite yet. And I think eventually later on, I would want to go to like a self-hosted option. But for now, Vercel is great for super rapid, fast iteration. And then going over to the back end side of things, I also have Superbase running and powering everything on the back end. So over here, you can see my Superbase project. I primarily use it for these four things right here. Actually, a fifth thing, edge functions too. So I use it for the database. I use it for authentication. I use it for storage. I use it for real-time database connections as well. And then lastly, I use Superbase edge function. So that's where I have this GitHub repo right here, Monty Superbase. This is where all of my Superbase edge functions live. And this is where I have a lot of the common code that I can share between the Expo application as well as the Next.js application. So, you know, stuff like summarizing a recording or translating a recording or starting a conversation with a PDF document or with a recording transcript. This is where all the common logic is shared between the Expo application as well as Next.js. Now, I will say that if I were to do this all over again, I probably would have done a mono repo setup. As you can see right now, it's separated between three separate repos. Monty Expo, Monty Superbase, and then Monty Next.js, which is fine. But I part of me wants to just create one Monty repository that has each of these three sub directories built into it. I think it'll be a little bit easier to manage. And unfortunately, because of the setup, I don't have the ability to as easily share code between Expo and Next.js. Like there's no like shared common code folder. So right now it's going to sound crazy. But when I do go out to share code and share logic between the two applications, I do a lot of copying and pasting. Like I'll copy code from the mobile app and paste it over and port it over to my Next.js application and vice versa. I do not recommend it. It's horrible. It does not scale well, but but with being a super lean team of just myself being the only engineer and my co-founder being the marketing person, you kind of have to pick and choose your battles. And I'm personally okay with prioritizing velocity and speed of development over some of these uh, more proper things to do, like consolidating everything into one repo, maybe creating a private NPM package that I can import between all the different applications. I'll do that eventually, but right now that's just not the priority. So that's how the application is built from 
a shared logic perspective between my web app, my Android app, and my iOS application. But most important thing is how do I do cross-platform subscriptions? And that is where the app I use is called Revenue Cat. Revenue Cat is originally this tool that was supposed to make mobile purchases easier. So their primary customers were app developers for the Apple App Store, as well as the Google Play Store. But they also have web support as well. So I personally use Revenue Cat to handle all of my payment purchases, as well as subscription renewals and all of that across my three different applications. So one thing I really like about Revenue Cat is the fact that they have this Revenue Cat paywall feature. It essentially right here lets you generate new paywalls and push new paywalls out without having to create a new code update, without having to create a new app update. Because all this paywall is hosted within like Revenue Cat. They host the paywall for you. And they also have a built in a paywall editor from within their web browser that you can modify it with. And you can do stuff like A-B testing between different paywalls to see which one converts better. There's also other really popular competitors. I think Superwall was the one that actually originated this paywall A-B testing feature. But I like to use a Revenue Cat paywall just because it's built into Revenue Cat. And then similarly, Revenue Cat also has Revenue Cat payment links, essentially their web version of paywalls where you can just create your payment landing page from within Revenue Cat and then they host the entire thing for you like right here as well. So you get a lot of free features out of the box kind of. It's like if I'm already using this for my mobile applications, I just ended up using it for my web application just for simplicity because yes, technically you can definitely do it in a way such that only use Revenue Cat for your mobile applications and then you work directly with Stripe as your payment processor for your web application and maybe eventually down the line I'll do that if I find Revenue Cat as charging too much of a fee on web and I just don't want to lose that money. I, it's pretty marginal though. It's not that much. So maybe if I want greater customization in the future, I'll stop using Revenue Cat on my web app and I'll just use direct Stripe integrations, which I've done many times in the past with other apps that I've built. But so far, Revenue Cat's been pretty great because they handle all of the subscription renewal logic, granting new features to certain users and stuff like that. Highly recommend it. So that is a quick overview of how I run my cross-platform application of Monty. I'll include a link to the app itself in the description down below if you're interested in it. Yeah, I use Expo to build up the mobile app for both Android and iOS. I use Next.js to power the front end, the web application for it. And then I use Superbase to power the back end with the Superbase Edge functions, having some common logic shared between the mobile app as well as the web application and as well as like authentication, database and storage. And lastly, I use Revenue Cat to handle all payment processing and handling which users are subscribed, which users aren't subscribed. So that is my tech stack for building out my cross platform app. Let me know if you have any thoughts or any questions, leave them in the comments down below. If not, then I will see you in the next one. Peace.